The last few months have been a pretty crazy time for the world of GPUs. With loads of new cards released by AMD, Nvidia and even Intel and some of the biggest controversies we've ever seen in the world of gaming GPUs. So today I'll be cutting through all of that to tell you definitively what you should and crucially shouldn't buy in 2025 and walking through the best graphics cards right now for a range of price points and resolutions. Let's do this. The Corsair Frame 4000D is here and better than ever. With a spacious and fully modular design, you can configure this case to meet your build's exact needs. Improved airflow at the front and on the side helps to keep temperatures down, while Corsair's new InfiniRail mounting system allows you to adjust fan rails for added versatility and a cleaner aesthetic. What's more, it's compatible with reverse connector motherboards, 360mm all-in-one radiators, and comes with an integrated GPU anti-sag arm. Learn more and check it out at the first links in the description below. Let me begin with some really important context about not only what's going on in the GPU landscape, but also what your options are, how the naming schemes work, and what everything means. Now really, there are two key players in the world of GPUs, AMD and Nvidia, but recently Intel has also joined the party with their second generation of ARC GPUs that have actually mixed things up a little bit. Nvidia's lineup is named GeForce RTX and starts right through from the RTX 5060 on the low end to the RTX 5090 on the high end, while AMD's graphics card lineup in their 9000 series currently begins with the 9060 XT and tops out at the 9070. XT. Intel, on the other hand, have their ARC cards with the B570 and B580. Now, in terms of which brand is better, the answer really is none. It all depends what you're looking for. Typically, Nvidia seem to be better with their AI features, which ironically is where a lot of their controversy has come from recently. This includes things like their multi-frame generation, which uses AI to add extra fake frames, but it is something that can boost frame rate and some people do like. AMD tends to be better when it comes to video memory. That's the gigabyte figure that's often quoted at the end of a GPU name and has also been a big point of controversy, but I'll come back to that in just a moment. While Intel are very much the underdog, they're less reliable in terms of consistent performance in every single title, but they've made massive strides, especially at the budget end of the market, which some of you will quite like. I also often get asked, James, how much video memory do you need? And this is something I think I want to touch on before working through each of my recommendations. Now, typically for 1080p, you want at least eight gigabytes of video memory. But really, if you're going to try and future-proof your build in as many ways as you can, you want to be more in the 12 gigabyte region. For 1440p gaming, you'll want around about 12 to 16 gigabytes of video memory, while 4K gaming can require anything from 16 gig to 20 gig to even higher. VRAM is heavily linked to the texture settings in your game, so if you like really high textures, something which tends to make your games look a lot, lot better, you'll want to bear this in mind when looking at memory. It's also worth pointing out that Nvidia on their 50 series lineup are using exclusively GDDR7 memory. AMD on the other hand have stuck with last generation's GDDR6 standard, meaning while they may have more memory, their memory is actually slightly slower. Something which can give Nvidia a little bit of extra performance, especially when there is less VRAM on offer. So let's start then shall we with the budget end of the market. And really you've got three main options to consider for under $300. Now these options are the Intel Arc B570, the Intel Arc B580 and the RTX 5060. Now let's start with the 5060 because that launched the most recently and is the most controversial card I'm probably going to talk about in today's video. Now the RTX 5060 builds upon the RTX 4060 and comes in at the same $299 price point. Despite some of the negative press, it actually provides, dare I say it, quite an impressive gen on gen performance jump as we'll see in the numbers in a moment. Its big problem is that it's actually a little too fast for its own good and its 8 gigabytes of video memory really does hold it back, especially if you want to game at 10 1080p with the textures cranked right up, or of course 1440p. Helpfully, Intel do combat this with their ARC B580 and B570, which feature 12 and 10 gigabytes of video memory respectively. The problem is that like a lot of GPUs, these are under particularly high demand, they're going often for above their MSRP price points, and they do both offer less raw performance than the RTX 5060. They avoid the bottlenecking at 1440p, which is good, but the 5060's extra power helps to compensate 
for its restricted amount of video memory. Starting off with Apex Legends at 1080p high, and the RTX 5060 pulls in 281 frames per second. This pulls a fairly significant lead over the B570 and B580. In Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 at 1080p high again, rasterization, the 5060 pulls in over 100 FPS, and once again leaves the B580 and B570 pretty much for dust. Cyberpunk at 1080p high rasterization on these cards leaves the RTX 5060 once again looking surprisingly good with 121 frames per second on average compared to the B580's 104. Not bad considering it's cheaper MSRP and the B570's 92. In Hogwarts Legacy at 1080p high rasterization, the RTX 5060 delivers 126 FPS on average compared to the B580's 91 and B570's 78, while Marvel's Rivals at 1080p high rasterization once again looks fairly good for the RTX 5060 with 115 FPS on average. Now these numbers are all at 1080p and as you can see from our cap frame X overlay, you're not hitting the kind of VRAM limitations that we're talking about. Tune up to 1440p though where the VRAM usage is higher and the RTX 5060's lead does shrink a little. 210 FPS on average in Apex at 1440p high compared to the B580's 167 and B570's 144. Actually pretty impressive considering the B570's 60 to 70 dollar lower MSRP than the 5060. While Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p rasterization sees the 5060 pull in just shy of 80 FPS compared to the ARC B580's 72 and B570's 63. Finally in Hogwarts Legacy, the 5060 sits around 85 FPS while the B580 and B570 sit within the region of 61 and 69 frames per second respectively. But the 5060 might be about to encounter a problem and it comes in the form of a pretty imperfect solution from AMD. Now AMD have actually just released their new 9060 XT, which again comes in two flavors, an 8 gig and a 16 gig variant. Handily, AMD, like Nvidia with their 5060 Ti, is refusing to send out the 8 gig model for anyone to test. But we're expecting this to be a good chunk faster than the 5060. The problem is whether or not AMD can actually get retailers to hit the MSRP and whether they'll even be bothered to push the 8 gig variant in the first place as they're likely going to have more margin and more supply in the higher end 16 gigabyte model. So that then is our sub $300 price bracket. But what if you want to step up to around about a $400 mark? What options have you got? Now in truth, you've only really got two or three options. The best option is this, the RX 9060 XT. Now this is AMD's latest edition and I'm talking specifically about the 16 gig model. This comes in with an MSRP of $349, undercutting Nvidia's $379 16 gigabyte 5060 Ti and offering up comparable if not better performance, while also knocking on the door of the RX 7700 XT, which is last gen's $399 option. It's harder than ever to recommend last gen cards, as AMD and Nvidia actually sold through the vast majority of their supplies during Black Friday and Cyber Monday last year, add into account the tariffs, especially of course for my US viewers and a bit of panic buying, and there's just not a lot of the last gen GPU options left. Now the 16 gigabyte 9060 XT is really rather good. I don't like that the 8 gig variant has the same name, I think that's pretty sneaky from AMD, but in terms of performance, this thing for the price is pretty impressive. At 1080p, the card cleans up, beating out the more expensive 16 gig 5060 Ti in Apex Legends, Alan Wake, and Call of Duty's Black Ops 6, all by good margins as well, while Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p high sees it exactly tied to one decimal place with the 5060 Ti 16 gig, and Hogwarts sees it in a respectable position, if a little lower than the 5060 Ti option. Move up to 1440p and you're going to get over 230 FPS in Apex Legends, a frankly awesome 122 FPS in Call of Duty's Black Ops 6, that's not far off last gen's nearly $600 4070 Super, and 88 frames per second in Cyberpunk 2077, which sits very marginally below the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gig. Now if you can buy this card for the manufacturer's suggested retail price or even within about 10%, I think it represents really good value for money and is a do-it-all GPU for 1440p gaming. So that's the sub $400 price point. What if you've got a little more? 
anywhere between 400 and 600 USD. Here your options really start to open up, with the RX 9070 coming in at a 549 MSRP, the 9070 XT at a 599 MSRP, and the RTX 5070 at a 549 dollar MSRP too. So three really compelling options. The RTX 5070 is sort of ruled out, in my opinion, on the basis that it's beat out by both the equally priced RX 9070 and by a huge margin by the RX 9070 XT, which costs around 10% more. It's also got only 12 gigabytes of video memory, which is frankly not enough. And while it's the faster GDDR7 standard, that's not enough to compensate. Now in Nvidia's defense, the 5070 in regions like the UK is now widely available for below its MSRP price, which is pretty nuts. AMD are still struggling to get their prices under control, presumably because of the unbelievable level of demand these cards have had, and the performance numbers show why that's the case. In Alan Wake 2 at 1440p high with a bit of ray tracing, AMD actually performed really well compared to Nvidia, with the 9070 beating out the 5070 and the 9070 XT topping the chart. Move down to rasterization and in Apex Legends at 1440p high, the 9070 XT hits pretty much that 300 FPS cap, with the 5070 a little further behind. In Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 at 1440p high rasterization, the RX 9070 and 9070 XT sit in the 160 FPS or so region, beating out the RTX 5070 by a considerable margin. Move through into Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p high rasterization, and the RX 9070 once again provides chart topping performance, leaving the RTX 5070 around 10 FPS behind. Turn ray tracing on, and the 9070 holds its lead, which is pretty amazing and shows how far AMD have come, with the 5070 sitting around about 7 frames per second lower. Finally, in Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p high rasterization, the RX 9070 XT provides incredible performance, beating out the 5080, while the RX 9070 beats out its Nvidia 5070 rival by a good margin. These cards are actually pretty good at 4K too, especially the 9070 XT. It's arguably more of a 4K than a 1440p card. Visible in the likes of Alan Wake 2 at 4K high raster, where it delivers 60 FPS on average. That's more than the RTX 5080. While in Apex Legends, the RX 9070 XT suffers a rare loss to the 5070 Ti, a card that's crucially a lot more expensive, while the 9070 lags around 6 FPS behind the 5070. In Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 Zombies, the 9070 XT regains its characteristic lead over the RTX 5070 Ti, pulling in 112 FPS on average. Cyberpunk 2077 is a similar story, with the 9070 XT virtually tied with the $150 more expensive 5070 Ti, and the RX 9070 frankly smashing the RTX 5070 with a frame rate delta of around 13%. I think the 9070 XT really shows you haven't got to spend a fortune to get good 4K gaming performance. But what if you want to spend more than $600? What do your options look like? And I'll be honest with you, there's not that many. AMD's 9070 XT is currently their most expensive GPU, and recent talk from their executives implies that won't be changing anytime soon. The RTX 5070 Ti is hard to recommend based on the performance of the 9070 XT, leaving us really with only two options of GPUs that you should consider for top-end gaming. Now, I know that NVIDIA have been in the press lately for some good stuff and some not-so-great stuff. Now, I can't really echo the same experiences as some of the big US media with NVIDIA, and I've always found them pretty amicable to work with. Now, yes, they do occasionally say to me, in your review, you didn't really talk about MFG, and, you know, why was that? And often I'll say to them, because I didn't want to, or it wasn't on my agenda. And beyond the initial question, I've never had any pushback. And to be clear, that's a characteristic behaviour that I've also seen from the like of Intel and AMD who want to push their features. Now, I'm not for one second saying that some of the stuff NVIDIA have done, like blacklisting hardware unboxed years ago, was very clever, and I can't talk for gamers' Nexus experiences. But what I can tell you is that if you have a lot of money to spend on a graphics card and you want the best performance, it's AMD who you should be shouting at for not giving you any options. NVIDIA are your only choice. Now, the 5080 has an MSRP of just under $1,000. Again, in the UK, we're actually seeing the MSRP come to fruition, and in the US, price tracking has indicated that Nvidia's pricing is actually closer to MSRPs than AMD's. I know, right? The 5080 provides great performance at 4K. I wish it provided a bit more of a generational performance jump over the last gen 4080 Super, and I talked about that in my launch build review for the 5080. It gives you the multi-frame gen, which you can either use or not use, but it gives you class-leading ray tracing and the best rasterization on the market for the price. The 5090 is a very similar story. 
I don't even need to read the numbers to show you that this thing tops the charts. It destroys everything in its wake. And it's perhaps one of the reasons we were so disappointed with the wider 50 series lineup, because this is the first card we reviewed and it was really quite good. For a lot of gamers, it's probably wasted. You don't need to spend this much money for gaming alone. You don't need the 32 gigabytes of video memory. You don't need all of the immense amount of processing power. It's better for content creators, video editors, streamers, but if you want the ultimate, that is what you're gonna pick. The GPU market then is a little bit of a minefield at the moment, and recent controversy hasn't helped when it comes to making your buying decision easier. But hopefully now some of the tariff stuff has calmed down, and with more and more cards hitting the market, we can only hope that that will help with demand and help to bring prices back down to a reasonable level. Talking of which, I will leave up to date pricing and availability for Amazon, Newegg and Overclockers linked down below, and you can hopefully bag yourself a deal on a new GPU. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like rating, get subscribed, thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.